A new location. A new shrine. What is this place? And why does it kindle such calming memory? Perhaps this is what you've been fighting for. A memory of the world that was. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Loki Oren, and we are in Darkest Dungeon 2, and... Uh, this is going to be kind of an interesting uh, video here because this is also going to be featured in the Backstabbers video, which will be going out, um, you know, in kind of sequence with this. But I just wanted to talk about the Altar of Hope in a um, in kind of a macro sense. So let's go ahead and get dived in. So this is the Altar of Hope, and you can see right now there's not a whole lot to it it's uh, pretty uh cut down i only have seven candles uh remember because uh, this is actually my second run in this uh the first one ended up kind of scuffed and not very fun to watch so i just you know hit the reset button came back with seven candles and we'll check it out so first up is the intrepid coast which um has only three upgrades right now journey which upgrades your wagon with things like more inventory slots more equipment mounting increased loot and so on all the way up to the top which is even more inventory resourcefulness which gives us early um which gives us some early benefits here we can get uh an extra chunk of wealth at the first valley hoarder which we'll see more in a minute uh we can also get additional relics um sanctuary is quite good makes the hospital not a dead node here is there one for Free spring water. Wow, that's good. Arriving at a watchtower, plus one speed. Wow, so there's some quite good upgrades here. And then Renown, which is just kind of prestige. It's just swag. Get the different um, upgrades here. And then Companionship and Infernal Flame, which is coming later. Next up is the Working Fields, which are trinkets, combat items, stagecoach items, and so on. We'll come back to this one because we might spend a candle here. But interesting note, when you put a candle into this... You actually get the item so you don't it's not just chance to find it in future but you actually get one of the one of those items at the start next up is the living city which is uh upgrading your heroes and unlocking new ones you can see here i've already unlocked the bounty hunter as well as put a point in to upgrade each of the uh, characters and this goes down the line to upgrade you know different stats improve their stats here um, unlocks their hero paths which are um, essentially i think they appear to be selectable though it's hard to really say finally we have the timeless wood which i accidentally put a couple candles into i didn't mean to but upon com i think it's upon successfully completing a run you get a memory and with each memory your characters get more powerful um so right now there's no sense in investing in this and finally the recollection which is just everything we have and you'll see right now, you know, we've got a bunch of basic items, a few upgrades that I purchased, and slime mold. We only have one type of food right now. So let's go ahead and get back, uh, let's get back to the Intrepid Coast, because I've kind of figured out what I want to do here. Three to upgrade to that, five to upgrade to that, so we could just get a bunch more relics. But I think what we do, put three candles into this, which gives us an extra stagecoach equipment slot. Um, can one of our heroes get... Unfortunately, we can't use the rogue highway path this round. Ooh, I do like the surgeon path, though. But I think what instead what we'll do is we will just put it into in items. So, yep. So we unlock an in item. We get boxing gloves. So we will have a set of boxing gloves in our wagon. Upgrade again. We have meditative totem now, too. One more time. And there it is, Stake and Spuds. So now Stake and Spuds can drop, which is quite good. And you know what? We'll upgrade, a, we'll do a Trinket as well. We got Sacred Scribblings. It's quite good. So let's go ahead and embark. And now we'll be cutting back over. Or, um, thank you all for watching this uh, Altar of Hope kind of initial review. There's a lot more to unpack here, and I will be thinking about that and talking about it in future runs but I did just want to like take a quick beat to talk about what's here. My recommendation personally would probably be no, don't do what I did where I'm kind of spreading it out. I'm just kind of unlocking things as they interest me. I think the strategy would be 
your initial upgrade should just be dumping into journey early on in resourcefulness and just getting these initial upgrades getting your economy going um i'm doing it a slightly different way because i'm a masochist like that but anyway thank you all for watching until next time see ya